Our scripture this morning comes from Luke chapter 14, beginning with the first verse and skipping over to verses 7 through 14. Stop and listen to what God may be saying to you today. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your seat or your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, Move up higher, then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There are times in life where it's, it's hard to, to hear God. Um, sometimes maybe we're not in a place where we're able to listen very well. Um, maybe there are distractions in our lives that uh, take our attention. Maybe, um, maybe there are periods, you know, that I, I, I think the, the spiritual journey is one that, that has uh, uh, ebb and flow to it. Sometimes there are high peaks on the mountain, and sometimes there are journeys through the valley. And, and through periods, life can feel that God is, is distant, or that, that maybe even despite our best efforts, we're not able to, to hear God, um, like our video suggested. And then there are times like in our scripture today where Jesus speaks plainly, um, probably more plainly than the guest for the dinner that he was invited to uh, would have cared for, right? Um, says to the folks who are there, um, choose the low place and then you can be honored. And to the guest, uh, says, don't invite your friends and your family and people who can repay you uh, when you throw a party or when you uh, have a dinner. Invite those who will never be able to repay you, the hungry, the poor, the lame, the broken. Um, it's a parable that um, is not difficult to understand. He ple- speaks very plainly, maybe more so than we would care for. I mean, honestly, um, think about who you've invited into your home in the last year or two. Um, just think through that. Make a list. Write it down if you want to. Who are the people you've invited into your home? Um, I suspect they probably look, if, if you have, when, one of the things that, that social scientists say is that we really are not inviting people into our houses. One of the things that I think, find fascinating whenever I watch with Angie one of those home improvement shows, you know, and they all have to have a huge kitchen and open into the, the living area so that they can have these grand parties, you know. And, and people, they build a house for an occasion that they might do once or twice a year at the most. Um, you know, the, it's kind of comical in a way. I mean, I understand it. I feel the same way. But the truth is we don't invite people into our homes very often. And they're certainly not the people that fit Jesus' criteria, I think. Um, the, the, we tend to invite people who are a lot like ourselves. Uh, and Jesus wants us to look at that differently, to think about it differently. Um, 
Maybe we wish Jesus would have taken a more nuanced approach than just speaking so plainly, right? I mean, he does that a lot of times. It's kind of hard to interpret. And so, you know, we can kind of get ourselves off of the hook, you know, because it's, you know, we're not really sure exactly what, you know. And, but, but here it's plain. He's laid it out plain. It's, it's, it's hard to ignore. Um, or we can choose to ignore, but, but, but he's said it very clearly. It's about etiquette, about etiquette and what we choose to, to recognize and how we practice our life uh, together. And this, seems, this will sound like an ancient thing. Uh, you remember Jay Leno? He used to have a television show in the evenings. Um, yeah, he, he had a thing on etiquette. He said that uh, politely waiting uh, in the receiving line for 10 minutes to kiss the bride is good etiquette. He said, kissing the bride for 10 minutes, bad etiquette. Um, guests uh, place their gifts uh, by the sign reading gift table, that that's good etiquette. The groom placing the gifts by a sign that reads yard sale, bad etiquette. Uh, bride and groom who thank Uncle Harold for his check, good etiquette. They ask Uncle Harold for two forms of ID to accept the check, bad etiquette. Uh, the bride coming down the aisle as the organist plays, here comes the bride, good etiquette. The bride coming down the aisle while the organist plays Lola by the kinks, bad etiquette. So, you know, all these rules of how we are to behave and uh, with each other, you know, it's, it's kind of like now the place where we like to talk about good or bad etiquette around our, our cell phones, right? I mean, when you go out in public and an event, you should turn your cell phone off, right? Um, you know, in worship, you should have your cell phone turned off, right? Did, uh, oh, I think that's, that's me, isn't it? Thank you, Steve. Yeah. I was just hoping nobody would call before we got to that point in the service, but... Uh, you know, Jesus wants to give us a new etiquette, if you will, uh, an etiquette for the kingdom of God, uh, the way that if we are to live by those who share God's value and want to participate in God's grand party, the grand banquet of life, um, he gives us a new etiquette. And it's one where we're not concerned about climbing the ladder uh, putting ourselves in the highest status we can, where we're not concerned about how others may look at us, but we're really concerned about, um, about the great leveling that he talks about, that we are concerned about how all of us are to share life together and to share it fully. Uh, he has rules for the guests, it's interesting how he starts with the, the guest. And, and you imagine, I mean, as, as Jesus is at this dinner, uh, that he has seen this. This is, you know, something he's seen has prompted it. And um, we all have been at places like that, haven't we, where uh, we, we see people not behaving properly. And we all wish we could call them out, but none of us has that nerve or the standing that Jesus would have. But, uh, and, and he does, he, he calls it out when he sees it. And, uh, you know, don't, don't try to man maneuver the world, get out of the crass manipulation that the world will school us in, because it will. It will teach us a way of looking at life where we think that our value is what other people value us as. But understand ourselves who God, as God understands us. And so we, we should quit clamoring in that way. And we shouldn't use our life, um, the life God's granted to us, uh, for just providing a way for other people to pay us back and to reward us. We should live with great generosity to all. It doesn't mean you can't have the party and have your friends and your family over. But what it means is that, that it's not about... Um, gaining something that someone can repay us for. It's not about um, the social status that the world may see. Um, it, our lives are an incredible resource that God intends for us to live and, and to hold richly and fully and to share it deeply with others. 
irrespective. It's one of the beauties of church, isn't it? Um, that, that we come from a great cross-section of, of this community. Wealthy and those who struggle. We come from different ages, from different periods in our lives. We, uh, we come from a lot of different backgrounds and, and, and those help shape who we are as community. And um, it's not because someone does well in life that we love them in the church or because they've not done well. We love them because they're God's children. And that kind of is a bigger power. It's what, um, it's a part of something that God wants to change the world in how we, we relate and, and, and operate. God doesn't want us to be in the world of division. There's too much of it around. There's too much from old to rich to Democrat to Republican. I mean, I, that, we can have our political views and exercise those, but we, we have to have love and respect and dignity and not see the other as, as bad because they look at the world differently than we do, than they vote differently than we do. Jesus' value is very different. Uh, he wants to teach us that, that because we are is enough. We are God's children. We were created. We were given life. We are human beings. And because of that, we deserve God's love. We deserve each other's love and respect. One of the things um, our book of discipline talks about uh, uh, that every person is a, a child of God and of sacred worth and value and deserving to be treated with dignity and respect. Period. Everybody. Everybody is a child of God deserving to be treated with dignity and respect. And, and that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. And when we come here, that's what we want to see. That's what we want to live. Um, and, and it can be hard. It, it's harder living it outside the walls of the church. So in a way, uh, we get to practice it with each other here. Uh, we, we expect the highest values from each other and how we practice that and live it with each other. And, and, and so we, we do that here so that we can carry it out into the world. And by the time Friday comes, you may not be feeling it. Um, but by the time Sunday comes around, we return to that place and we return to that center. Uh, because uh, here we see the world the way it is, the way God has created us and, and called us to be. I uh, had a friend who was writing a, about this passage, and he had something to say. I, I thought, you know, that it's easier to say it in someone else's voice than your own, although I think every pastor has probably felt this at some point. Uh, he, he said about, about this, he said, for years, uh, Churches that I've served have collected food to be sent off somewhere for the hungry. Or think of the person who with some grandiosity walks into my office with a ham, asking me to give it to some poor person. He says, on a bad day, I'd say thanks. On a better day, I'd say, find someone yourself and deliver it to them yourself. Or on my best day, I'd say, take it home and invite the people you have in mind to your home to share it with them. You know, there, there sometimes as a pastor, you might want to be that blunt. Um, he can write about it. I'm sure he never said it. Uh, and I can read it to you because it's his words, not mine. But, but sometimes, you know, we, we find ourselves in that place. Um, we want to be charitable. We want to be loving. And there are a lot of wonderful ways to do that. And sometimes it's, it is as simple as we, we, we bring food to the church to take to the food pantry so that we can distribute it throughout the community. And we develop processes and ways for how we handle that. And that's wonderful. But, but it's not the limit of how we're to, to be generous and sharing and compassionate in the world. Um, what if? What if you saw your role as God's minister to your block, to the block you live on. Maybe you live on a long street, so narrow it down. Maybe just to 
four or five houses that are uh, on either side of you and across the street. Take that block of people and say, you know, God has called me to minister to this community of people. Um, what would it look like? What, uh, to, to just then take that group and say, you know, I was thinking it'd be great. Um, I'm going to cook hamburgers Friday night on the grill. I would like you all to come over, and um, if you want to bring something, that'd be great. We'll do it at 6 o'clock. And just take that as your role to be a minister to that community, to invite that group. That, that might be the simplest step out we could take, wouldn't it? Um, the least threatening um, way to invite a group of folks who maybe we know a little bit, maybe we don't know well, um, into our lives and begin to share in life intimately with them and to begin to live that kingdom value in the midst of our communities. There's a great leveling Jesus makes allusion to. It's the, uh, the eschatological coming of God's kingdom. And it's a great leveling. And sometimes we hear that and are, feel threatened by it. Maybe the more we have, the more threatened we feel by it. But it's a time where no longer will the social realm determine the value, but all value is determined by God. And it's a great reversal. It's a reversal of values in God's economy. And it allows us to see where the true source of humility is. Those who live with humility... Uh, they do so, uh, where it is qual a quality of life uh, that opens a person to know their worth is not measured by the recognition of their peers, but by the certainty of God's acceptance. God's acceptance is what gives us our true value. It's not how our peers see us. It's not how those in the pew beside us see us. It's by how God sees us. And it's outside of our performance at work. It's outside of the zeros on our checking account um, or on our pay stub. It, it, it's irrespective of all those things. And when we truly know we are a child of God and we live with that in our hearts, everything else is secondary. It doesn't mean we don't worry about things. It doesn't mean that we're free completely, but there is a liberation in it if we allow ourselves. There's a liberation that sets us free from needing to be recognized, from needing to have as a way we think we gain our value. It allows us to live in humility um, because we know we're already of great value, of the greatest value. We're one of God's children. And there's no greater value in the world. When we, a little bit later, are going to come for communion, um, we're going to come and stand in line to wait. Um, when we do that, there's no importance by how great a person is or how much of a sinner a person is. Uh, we just come and we stand in line. It's a part of God's great leveling where we come to the table together. Um, the good news is we're set free. And the good news is we are of the highest value, children of God. Amen.